Prickly acacia is regarded as one of the worst weeds in Australia, according to the National Pricklebush Management Group. It chokes out more grass than any feed value it produces. It can turn mustering into a nightmare, with its long thorns being a danger to people, stock and vehicles, and inevitably some stock escape muster. With the recent run of favourable seasons, the explosion of prickly acacia has driven landholders to invest increasing time, money and energy into controlling the invasion of their productive land. Looking across this flat up here, you could see from one side to the other three or four kilometres quite easily. And now you, you, know, you can't even see 100 metres. For 10 years, Desert Channels Queensland has worked with graziers, other regional groups and local governments around the Lake Eyre Basin to control weed infestations that threaten land productivity and environment. You all know the cost of prickly acacia. They are things like loss of production, increased mustering costs, reduced stock access to water and the cost of doing something about them. They are really high dense and ultra dense areas. Yep. DCQ have ratcheted up their control efforts using groundbreaking technology to map and control weeds and taking on previously daunting dense and ultra dense infestations as part of their contribution to landholder planning and control groups called weed pacts. On the mapping here we've got quite a few natives yep. so we'll protect them. Yep. Over here in these ultra dense areas yes. where there's no natives we can use the drone um, and put our pellets out of that. The experiments over the past from Cespania last year right through to what's happening at Ortay now is just proof in the pudding that, that sound, logical and lateral thinking is going a long way towards correcting the problem. DCQ have also negotiated a process with state government to make weed control easier and cheaper for landholders under a new Area Management Plan, or AMP. Over the few years leading up to 2013, landholders throughout the upper catchments of the Lake Eyre Basin were shocked by the apparent explosion of prickly acacia in seasonal conditions that proved ideal for seed germination. The time bomb had been set in previous years as stock distributed seed from mature trees throughout the landscape. Following the wet years that we had, 2008, 9 and 10, for the first 12 months a lot of people didn't see what was coming because we had a huge body of feed and it covered the, the young prickly acacia. This dead stuff outside that we've sprayed around the trough here, it, it just grew from ground, a grass level to that in those couple of years and the other stuff that was probably a metre high that was already here, it went to about five or six feet. Yeah, it's just too much. Just it's just getting out of hand. As the scale of the prickly acacia explosion became apparent, so did the costs to production. It's getting to the stage now where we, we're just going to have to bite the bullet and do something about it. And it's going to cost a lot of money, like into the millions, I would think. Graziers take a three-way hit from prickly acacia in decreased productivity, land devaluation, and the inevitable costs of managing the weed. Bush Agribusiness analysed costs for a property starting out at 20 prickle trees per hectare. If they didn't spend the 100000 it would take to control the problem in the first year, they would be $260,000 worse off if they left control till four years later, and 420000 worse off if they waited until six years down the track. Weed control costs are a bitter pill that may be easier to swallow seeing what is coming over the horizon. A leading network of environmental research organisations states that without strategic management, it is likely we will see conversion of 14% of the entire Lake Eyre Basin to weed domination. Consultation with landholders put weeds as the highest rating land management issue in the Desert Channels region. DCQ takes a strategic approach, working alongside landholders to get best public benefit while controlling weeds on private land. Our investment in the future is targeted towards areas of more public benefit, which are prioritised through our mapping and planning processes. They'll include things like the recovery of sensitive areas and the removal of major seed sources. Knowing your costs in advance is critical to an effective plan. 
Scientists had tried to map prickly acacia from satellite images for more than a decade with little success. In 2013, DCQ approached the Department of Science, Information Technology, Innovation and the Arts. It was quite encouraging uh, what they produced through satellite imagery. It gave us a, a starting point that we can look at and say, OK, where are the spread of weeds in, in this property? We were so excited because, you know, at a certain property, we knew that, hey, this is actually close to perfect. It's a time series mapping, so we can go back 10 years or, or 15 years. And since those couple of wet years, we can really pick up the increase. The control work is mapped out, then allocated as a joint effort between DCQ and the landholder over a five year plan. So with the mapping and with, with us doing the work in the first year and the third year, we're actually breaking the backbone of, of the infestation for the landholder. And combined with the five year plan, they actually can probably see their way out of a situation where it's just a wall of prickly acacia in front of them and, and where do I go? The year one control target for DCQ is just under 10,000 hectares of dense and ultra dense infestations with landholders treating a further 65,000 hectares. These will mostly be in weed pacts, groups of adjoining properties, each with a five year plan. Ayrshire Hills has been a valuable testing ground to refine the control methods while at the same time cleaning up a strategic infestation. We're working at this site because it, it's the high country, it's Ayrshire Hills. Um, ADK west of Witten, and it's a, it's a double watershed. The prickly acacia started on these hills, and as you look down your waterways, you know, out to the west here, you see it going for miles, and it end, if we don't stop it, it's going to end up into the Diamantina, and then if we go to the other side of the hill, it goes east into the Wokingham and that's the main reason we started here because this is a huge seed source. We knew it's just from techniques, I mean from up, up against the side of the hill where it's very hard, we've, we've used the traditional basal barking and or the scatter gun and then um, further down where you still have a lot of watershed we've gone to probably Mr. Trials and We've used wet chemicals out of the drone. And as you get further down the system, you're getting onto the back soil flats, the water slows down, so we're using the residual chemicals there. That's a saving because you're getting the two or three years response there and, and you're getting your regrowth kill. Yep. By using definite, te definite techniques for each area or for different areas, it, it's allowing us to um, progress faster and we're actually using less chemicals. In fact, the cost savings on trials and projects to date are huge. Using this planned five-year multi-method approach, results so far indicate an 86% reduction in costs compared to the conventional treatment. With drought conditions in 2013, weeds could easily be put on the back burner. I know it's tight, but there's a 50% subsidy in the first year of chemicals and there's a um, reduced rate on your chemicals for the years in between we're not there. The opportunity's there, and if I was a landowner, I'd be looking extremely hard at coming to talk to us and, and trying to get on board and, and get on top of their wheat problem. The area management plan will also be a big boost to landholders currently struggling with prickly acacia. DCQ developed the AMP with feedback from the landholders to remove some of the costs associated with weed control whilst ensuring that mature native trees remain. DCQ has negotiated these benefits for landholders, but the control works must be linked to a plan. If he comes and does the plan with us and gets his AMP, it gives him the opportunity to kill those trees that previously, because of where they were, we weren't allowed to take our chemicals there. Clearly along your water depression lines, you want to save your natives and using different techniques that we have, we've achieved that as you can see behind me. And that also is a part of the AMP that we protect our native trees, but we've achieved our goal of killing all the prickly acacia trees. 
This new approach to prickly acacia control has been supported by the Queensland and Australian governments. The local state member, Vaughan Johnson, has taken a keen interest in the initiative. It's a responsibility of government, and me being a part of government, is to expose to my leaders the brilliant outcomes that have been reached here and the passion that not only the Desert Channels Queensland people have got, but also the landholders themselves. All I can see out of this is productivity on the raise. The landholders surrounding here, they're, they're seeing what we're achieving and they're all coming on board as a group and you know we'll really achieve something with, with a controlled effort here and, and we'll, we'll really kill some trees.